we're going to try out the Kubota M5 because uh, I think this is just going to be a great little tractor for us to have on the farm. It's uh, it's perfect addition to a vineyard. Hello and welcome along and welcome back to the old stream farm today we are finally going to get the final view finds planted we want to get ourselves uh, in a position where we can also work our vines we need to do some bits and pieces on those uh, and uh, and get them cultivated and mulched and i think we might try out a new tractor uh to do that unfortunately we can't afford one but uh, i think we might be able to lease one for this job and the reason why i want to uh to lease one and not use one of our existing ones is because uh something new is coming out in the very near future uh and i want to show off uh, exactly how well it works for the come on trailer let's open you up oh we haven't connected that there we go right uh, i want to show you how well it works on here for doing vineyard stuff so there's a possibility we could sell this but i'd prefer not to uh, i think it would be uh, better served for us to uh, actually just lease it and, and then we can decide if it works really well uh, then it's going to be something that we could add to the farm at a slightly later date uh, but for now I want to give it a try out let's just drop off our bale spike though and put this on here uh, because we need every penny we can get hold of at the moment we've got at least four rows of uh, four rows of vines to place uh, and plant and what we're going to find is that it's going to be about 50 odd thousand to do that and uh, and get all those in so i'm expecting us to maybe reach three vines today if we're lucky uh, that would be 39,000 to plant three sets of vines so that's what we're aiming for we need to get about uh, 3,000 off this. So let's just load this up here. Alternatively, I might sell our Antonio Carrera tractor. Uh, it is... How much is it worth, that tractor? Straight up, it's worth 29,000. So uh, it wouldn't give us enough money to do what I want to do, unfortunately. But uh, it would give us a bit of a boost towards it. And we get a little bit more money, actually, if we sold separately. But I think we need about 50000 to buy a new tractor. So uh, I don't think it's going to be something we can do. Uh, I think once the lettuce comes in or once we get some uh, new grass work done. Because at this time of year, grass work absolutely is a, uh, a real money spin up for us. Let's push those on a little bit. So uh, we should be able to make a decent amount from that. And uh, the other reason why I'm selling the eggs is because as we've been doing on all the other series on the channel, we're adding a little bit more realism in and we're trying to sell perishable goods at least once a month. Full pallets of it especially. I'm actually going to sell all of these eggs today. We've got a pallet there that isn't quite full, uh, but it is full enough, I think. Um, and as I said, we need the money. We need the money in order to plant the vines. So let's get this last pallet loaded up. And I've already checked out where our best place to sell all this today is. And that is going to be down at the bakery. Now the bakery is located just in here, up opposite the shop. So all of our eggs getting unpacked into the bakery and uh, making us good man. 51,300. That's brilliant. That pretty much means we're going to be able to plant all of the vines that we want to plant today. That's amazing. Right, back down to the farm. Let's see if we can get these vines planted. So I'm going to park up over here. Turn that off. And yeah, let's get some vines planted. 51,000. Uh, I think we're going to be ever so shy of uh, of what we want i think we want about fifty-two thousand to do this 
So let's go into here and into construction. Oh, this is this is going to be so close. Production and orchards and here. And it's about 13,000 to plant. Ah, oh, yeah, it's 12,915. Like that. We also need to extend this one out here slightly. So this is our second row, which is going to be another 12 thousand what are you colliding with i think i'm a little bit too close right let's move the car as well i want nothing in the way of getting these vines in uh if we can finish off this field today that is going to be exceptionally good right there we go that gets that out of the way we'll stand back here and then we can plant the rest of these so oh come on no Escape that. Let's take it out from there. There we go. Have got, yeah. So it's basically, I've got one row, two rows left. Right. The last row would be there. And I think that is probably, uh, it does take it right up to the edge. Right under the trees there. That's a little bit. I'd rather place the vines somewhere else, I think. So we're not going to do that. And we haven't got enough money to finish that row anyway. I am going to call that a nice full field. I don't mind leaving a little bit of space down the side there. I think that helps. And look at all this. All this needs mulching and cultivating. So uh, we've got to get that done as well. We're left with 11,330. And so I'm going to be a little bit indulgent today and uh, we're going to head up to the shop and lease a piece of equipment because, as I said, I really, really want to try out a new tractor. So what new tractor do I want to check out? Well, if you saw my video yesterday, you know that I have some nice early access to... The Kubota Pack DLC. So this is out on Tuesday. Um, as always, there is a link down in the description if you wish to purchase this pack. It's currently 8% off until it's released on Tuesday. And, uh, and yeah, it con contains all of these tractors. These four tractors... Uh, the front loader, the two skid steers, uh, the two uh, ATVs and, uh, and two front loaders. What we want to use on this series and, uh, and what I want to eventually buy, and we're going to be doing some contracts to get, is this. This is the M5. Um, I want to put, I think we're going to put uh, the Trelleborg tires on it. Uh, a little bit of a front weight. Um... Yeah, I think I think that would do it. Um, engine setup, it's right. What can we do? We can do 92 horsepower or 106. Don't think we need more than 92 horsepower for for the equipment we got. But that should do it for now. So we're going to lease this. It'll cost us 3,317 to try this out. That is absolutely fine. And if we head out of the shop. There it is. We're going to leave the landy up here until we return this later because I don't want to hold on this, onto this more than today. But uh, yeah, we're going to try out the Kubota M5 because uh, I think this is just going to be a great little tractor for us to have on the farm. It means we've got a nice sort of mix of things. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think we should do. Should, do you think we should have this along with our other tractor are uh, Antonio Carrera one or um well actually no I there is something the Antonio Carrera tractor does that this one doesn't uh, and that is uh, a front hitch in order to do the uh, in order to do the defoliating uh, defoliating this does not have a front hitch on it the only options are for the weights so yeah this one, I think, would be great for replacing the functionality that our methane tractor had. But uh, for for doing things like spraying I th uh, and defoliating, 
I, I think we probably want to stick with the Antonio Carrera. So the first bit of kit we're going to hook this up to is going to be this. It's our really small little uh, mulcher. Uh, we need to go through all of our bit, all of our vines and uh, and mulch, of course. So we're going to start off with these ones here. This hasn't grown up yet, so we're going to have to do that at a later date. Uh, at the moment, though, I want to get the rest of them. And look at that. That just... That should work brilliantly. We're going to have to start down the other end here uh, in order to get all of this. And, of course, we can't cultivate until we've mulched, we found out on this. So it's a combination of the two. Really maneuverable because this is, because this is so thin. It's a very, very maneuverable tractor. And, actually, I think... Because it, again, because it is so thin and because it has such, uh, it's so contained, it's going to work really well for us in so far as, uh, as getting all this mulched. The only trouble with this particular bit is that uh, it's leaning in. And we found this in the uh, top field. But as the tractor leans in, it does cause a little bit of issue. Uh, but this here seems to be working fairly well. And uh, I'm quite happy with this. Uh, we don't have to get all of this done today. But uh, obviously, if we want to return this tractor, then uh, it's going to be something we do have to do is to uh, get it cleared up. Otherwise, it is going to cost us a bit. I'm not getting quite as close as I would like with this mulcher in places. The slimness of this tractor really does let you get right up against the vines to get the mulching done. I do think it might actually benefit from a slightly wider uh, mulcher. Something that is, um, yeah, just, just is a little bit wider than the tractor. You wouldn't have to get the tractor quite so close to the vines. Although, I don't think there's a huge issue with that. Uh, as long as you're, you know, careful and uh, and you, you give a, a good... Uh, look of uh, things and, and you can keep quite close uh, it's uh, it works well it's nice that it's it's so self-contained and so tight I mean that does work uh, massively well for it I'm trying to do the vines though in such a way that uh, my turning around is a lot simpler uh, but this is uh, this is pretty good as with anything in the vineyard it's it's quite a uh, a task to try and get as close to the vines as possible but not catch the tractor on it and i'm finding unlike with the uh, uh unlike with the methane tractor i'm catching things a lot less because my maneuverability is is not quite as good as it was on the methane tractor uh my slight changes and slight movements aren't suddenly throwing my uh, equipment into the poles and getting me stuck and things like that so it works pretty well from that point of view so long as i'm getting close enough whoop, to the actual vines to uh, to do the mulching but um yeah it's it's working really well and i'm uh, i'm quite impressed with this tractor it's uh, it's perfect addition to a vineyard absolutely brilliant Really does allow you to get up close this and, uh, and and keep moving very well. I got stuck so much with the methane tractor. And here, this is just moving along nicely through these vines and, uh, and mulching away. I think I, I said I was only going to keep this for today, but I'm really thinking that A, we're not going to get past the mulching today. Uh, we've got a lot of vines to mulch. And therefore, I don't think we're going to really make it past uh, that part of this process. But also, I just I just want to play with this tractor some more. It is working out really, really well for me in the vines. And the only reason I'm missing stuff and having to go back like that uh, is because I'm, uh, I'm being rubbish at keeping it close to the vines. It doesn't help, though, that these vines aren't perfectly at 180 degrees. They are ever so slightly off. They uh, they go slightly to the left. Uh, yeah, slightly to the left here. And as a result, doing a 180 degree 
uh, or a, a 270 degree run will will run you into the vines it's it's something like 69 269 i think is uh, is where it runs down so if i can get myself on that line i'm pretty good um i do wonder if there's some way you could set up gps to work with the vines yeah we're moving away from it now it's not a massive amount off the straight but it is just enough to cause an issue i know i talked earlier about having a mulcher that was maybe uh, a little bit wider than the tractor but to be perfectly honest uh, it makes it a little bit easier because you you get the tractor as close up to the vines as you can and then uh you know you're roughly in the right position to to get this done uh, it's much easier than having to look back and down all the time and adjust from there so uh I'm, I'm not actually having as much of a problem as i did earlier when uh when doing this now uh we're turning fairly easily getting myself lined up i am doing sort of every other row and we are going to have to to head back and uh, get that row that I've, I've sort of left half done a little bit later. But I'm now pretty sure of where to place the bonnet, where to align myself up. And, uh, and with that and everything sort of running in the right place, uh, it's all running fairly smoothly. And, you know, we're, we're mulching these uh, rows really efficiently. Actually come to the conclusion, doing this is easier in cab than it is out of cab. I am scraping up against the uh, vines or, or or getting too far away from the vines. Far more from this position than I am from this position where I can line up my bonnet with where I want the poles of my vines to be. And then just hit the spot every time it's uh yeah really good way to do it and it's it's between that bump at the very front of the bonnet uh, and the side of the bonnet if i can line up so the poles move through that area i end up um getting exactly where i want with my mulcher which is great news oh i forgot to drop the mulcher down or pick the mulcher up at the end of that last row never mind all i did was mulch the grass and we don't really care about that grass much um here though this is mulching perfectly we've got a little bit of clear up there are a couple of tufts here and there that need doing um but we're only a couple of rows really from the end of this yeah it's about 269.3 269.4 is the angle we want and then that brings us nicely along the edge here and uh, and moving very smoothly oh look at that that is just absolutely beautiful i love that and that actually brings us to the end of here the bits that we've already planted uh we've got one uh, we've got two more rows to go doing this way and then we've got one row going the other way so we're going to finish down this end of the field on this one and then on the next one uh we're probably going to go over and do field one i think uh that's little uh that's fairly small should be able to knock that out quite quickly and then we've got field five to go and do as well uh which is gonna be uh a bigger job see you want to get right in here otherwise you get bits that are missed a little bit further back come on there we go yeah right up against these vines and then you can catch everything on both sides Oh, sometimes it, it around the pole you can miss one there we go right so uh yeah let's get this field finished i was thinking as i was doing the last couple of rows we've got just under eight thousand left we know that that will give us uh just over half a row and i don't want to go the whole way along that that last row and put us in the tree line but there is space at this top end of the field for this Oh, look at all that. So, uh, what I think we might do is just plant the uh, a, a little bit at the top end of the field. So, as we've done on other ones. So let's head into the construction. And we'll go production, orchards. And, yeah, 
So I don't want to do it right up to the corner there. I think we'll bring it a couple in here and just run it along the edge here until we start getting towards the tree line. So because we could run it, we could run it to about here-ish. I don't want to put it under the tree because that's going to cause havoc with our harvesters. So I think about there is a good amount. And that way, yeah, we've got a nice little bit of extra down here, right up to the edge of the field here. And then as we start getting into the tree line and it starts getting difficult for the harvester and everything, uh, we, uh, we cut it off. And we can always extend further down there. Uh, after this season if we want but i think that is uh, is a good compromise for that row um so i'm just gonna clean up a little bit around here and then we're gonna head over and get field one done so with the old cow meadow done uh we can shift over to here and with the way this is set up i think the best way for us to do is to start at the far end of the field here and we can come in here nicely with this Start it up, and yeah, so here we're mulching, but it looks cultivated already. So I don't know if we have to recultivate this. We're going to, um, just to, to try and make sure, but I think, I don't know how much it will boost our yield. We are trying to boost the yield as much as possible this year, because with all of our extra um, vines, we're going to go well over the hour for our higher of our harvester this year so as a result if we don't manage to get this uh so that we're in a position where uh we boost our yield and increase how much we get we're gonna find it very difficult to recoup the cost of the harvester at the very least the fact that we are able to grow the farm and have been able to grow the farm each year has been brilliant but uh it is proving to be a little bit of uh, an interesting conundrum with this to uh to make sure that we're making enough off these vines to uh to make a good profit i think we are making a good profit but uh i want to to make up for the fact that we're going to take a hit this year with the extra cost of renting the harvester these vines are much, much easier to work. And it's mainly due to the fact that they do run fully east to west. Uh, they, In fact, no, they run fully north to south, sorry. And uh, and as a result, I'm able to, to keep a much straighter, much more even run along the side of them. And only when I stray from it, like I did just then at the end of this row, uh, do I actually miss some stuff. But yeah, they are perfectly in line with the uh, with the north south uh, direction. So we're either traveling zero or one eighty the whole way along, and we just need to line up at the start here, get as close in as we can, drop this down, and then if we can get ourselves on that zero line we should do absolutely fine get a little bit closer in i think we need to be yeah we need to be a that little bit closer in as long as you get fairly close on one of the runs you're you're actually fine overall uh it will clear it out from both sides but it's when you don't get yeah it's when you don't get close enough like that uh that you might run into problems uh i've left a couple of lines further up uh that is just so it's easier for me to turn around at at least one end and so i don't have to do too much maneuvering i want to get this as close in as i can i'm getting better every time i do this i'm getting better at this i am kind of wondering is there must be a way to get this uh though to hit these lines really well with gps and I think when we eventually buy one of these tractors, we might actually try that because uh, that will be used exactly for this job in here. I like this tractor. I really do. It's a perfect little vineyard tractor for us on here. And uh, I have no reservations in eventually picking one up for the farm. Uh, it is just a dream to use on here. And so I, I keep comparing it to the tractor that we originally had for doing these jobs, which wasn't the Antonio Carrero. Uh, it was the uh, it, it was the methane tractor, that little tracked methane tractor. 
and I'm just having a better time doing this job with this tractor than I was with that other one. It just, yeah, it works better. I think this would work well as a tractor to do the carting for the grapes as well. Uh, I think Antonio Carrera tractor that we've got is uh, going to be great for doing the defoliating. I think that's going to be the main job of that. Um, although, again... I wonder if that's something our G-Series could do. If we could get that defoliator on the front of the G-Series, could we uh, Could we do that job with that? So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to know your thoughts, um, what you think to uh, to this in here, and, uh, and what the way forward might be. I certainly think that there's a place on our farm for this tractor. It, uh, it just seems to fit what we do and uh, and how we're working on here so well something i want to check quickly is what is our yield bonus in here so our yield bonus on here at the moment is 35 percent. this is well inside the area that uh needs to be mulched and over here well inside the area that has been mulched it's still only 35 percent. so as per last time i think that this does all need to be cultivated in order to get the yield bonus it's not the mulching itself that does it it's the uh, it's the fact that we uh, need to mulch it before we can actually do any cultivating and uh, and so that is going to be the job for next time is going to be to to get in here with a cultivator and get all these fields done especially the new ones uh, i want to get the new vines cultivated because they never have been uh, and then after that, uh, we do need to get a sprayer in here. Coming into, well, how grown are our vines? Let's have a look in here. Uh, so growing. Yeah, looking at this, um, fairly well grown by the looks of things. So uh, we, we're going to have to watch it. We're nowhere near uh, the, the, the darker end of that. What is field six? Oh, field six is oats yeah we're gonna have to watch soon because there's gonna be some harvesting contracts coming up but uh yeah so it's it's nowhere near uh fully done yet and this is pushing things back a bit um but we do need to get these uh cultivated and uh hopefully uh fertilized and then we will be all good uh, it makes sense to uh to get all of that done now and I don't think we've left this too late. Uh, certainly, this grass didn't grow up until recently. So, yeah, I think it's something that, that definitely we can do and uh, and try and get that fertilization up and and get the yield up pretty high to make the most of our grapes, which we haven't done yet. This is going very, very well. We are only about a couple of rows away from finishing. Yeah, in fact, this is going to be our last row uh, this way from here. We're going to have to go down the other end to do the rest and pick up those other two. Uh, down here. There we go. And then uh we're gonna be all done it is it has just gone five o'clock so we're actually not getting all of this done today we're gonna have to uh yeah i think we're gonna have to pick up some of this next time as well because our upper field still needs to be mulched but uh it is coming towards the end of the day hopefully we'll be okay i we're we're in a position where um we're looking at having this yeah all done today i think well i think we're, we'll have all of this done by the end of the next day it's gonna take us a little while to get field uh five done but otherwise i think we're all good all right let's bring that around there and oh i'm gonna have to go to the other end of the field now we've only got two rows left down this end so let's bring this round and then our two rows are up here there we go and we go in we go and that has got it look at that yeah we we'll have to drive a long way now to get these done final row and then that is field one done but it is quarter to six in the evening 
So, um, yeah, I think we might end up just uh, picking this up. In fact, I know what I'll do. I will get the field five done uh, off camera so that we can uh, sort of not repeat ourselves next game day. Uh, and because uh, I think we've probably gone on far enough on this video. So with that, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.